Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for December 27th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is National Fruitcake Day, Epidemic Preparedness Day, Abigail Day. It's the anniversary of Benazir Bhutto's death and Case Day. Let's go ahead and get started. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Alleluia. Our reading today, I thought we would finish up the Gospel of Mark. There are um, multiple endings to Mark. So we, we had the ending on Christmas Eve of Mark, the what seems to be the original ending where the women hear the news from the messenger, the angel at the tomb, that Jesus is not there and he will meet them in Galilee and they go and they don't tell anyone. We talked a little bit about how that's kind of jarring. It does not make uh, sense. And so we have um, this shorter ending, which is one of the options that was sort of seems to have been tagged on. Now we have two, there's a shorter ending and there's a longer ending and there's the original ending. So by textual evidence, first of all, there's, there are a couple of different sort of um, text strains. So these would be, um, you know, each of these manuscripts are, are handwritten or were handwritten at the time. And so you would have like in one area, they all have this, say the shorter ending that we're gonna read today. And then some er- other area and all of the copies that are copied off of those, right? Are this the longer ending that we're gonna look at later in the week. So there's two separate things and so Um, What that means is that there are two totally different endings. There is also some evidence of not only that the the endings don't quite fit language-wise and all sorts of different things, um, but I think, I don't know, I have to actually look into the specifics of manuscripts, but my guess is that there we actually have evidence of Mark actually just ending with that original ending, what we call, that are older manuscripts and uh, s- written in such a way that it makes it look like it's not, you know, the last page accidentally fell off or something like that. Part of why there are these other endings is because it is so jarring, that original ending, that the women went and did not tell anybody because they were terrified. We talked a little bit about how that sort of might as a listener you might hear that and say oh well obviously someone told somebody right because <laughs> you're writing down this story um but some authors some editors looked at this and said hey, let's maybe not just leave it there and so um this is one of the attempts at that so let's look at mark 16 that's the long one mark 16 9 through 20 And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterwards, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. All right, so... Again, this is a way to sort of sum up. What what have we heard? How does this message get out? And so there, there's this sort of adding of, hey, the women went and briefly told to the people around Peter. Um, already we have this sort of evidence of the importance of Peter. Uh, this is another reason why uh, there's sort of a difference between the shorter and longer ending, as we will see. Um, but it's specifically around Peter who came to prominence early on in the early church. Um, But also Jesus uh, also told (laughs) 
um, sent through them from the east to the west, the sacred imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. That Jesus said some things after that. Um, we have, again, evidence of that in the other gospels, but um, Mark's gospel doesn't have that. That's not important to Mark. And part of that, that's part of that, what we need to be focusing on and thinking about is, why would Mark end it like that? What does it add or what does it subtract to add this extra thing saying that, oh, sure, they told Peter um, and also Jesus said um, some of these things. Maybe it helps it keep it in line with the rest of the synoptic gospels, especially. But is what is lost is that sort of discomfort that um, feeling that in, maybe there's something more to this story which drives us to do something, right? Uh, if you are musical, it's like ending um, ending the uh, a song on anything other than the chord, the key chord, the chord that it starts out with. It's this uncompleted thing. You, you're wa left wanting more, and sometimes a musician can use that in a subtle way to say that there's, there is more. There's something that you have to supply, but the music is not supplied. It leaves you with this like wanting more. It leaves you with this uh, wanting to, to do something about it. I think that's how Mark's gospel is meant to be ended. So perhaps that's what's missing when we add on this shorter ending. Everything is tied up in a nice and easy bow, but it's meant to be a, to be continued. It's meant to be a cliffhanger. It's meant to make you think, imagine, wonder. Now that you have heard this story, what do you need to do? Is it important that Jesus says other things after? Also, not only does that Jesus says other things, but other things that are not recorded in this gospel. Is that important? Maybe it is. Luke talks about that there are all of these people who are alive at the writing of this gospel who saw Jesus. Or that perhaps that is important. Obviously, it's important to Luke, but it's not important to Mark. So what do we do when endings are not complete? When there's something left to do, do we go out and proclaim the good news of the gospel, or do we write a nice, tidy ending so we don't have to worry about it anymore? now that Christmas is over, now um, we are, <laughs> it's interesting because our cultural calendar leads up to Christmas and now we're in New Year's. Now there's Mardi Gras stuff at Walmart. But the Christian year, all of the time, or a lot of the time before Christmas is Advent, a time of preparation, and we are now in the season of Christmas. Christmas begins, and now we continue on to January 6th. Maybe it feels a little bit anticlimactic to have this, the rest of this season to be in Christmas, but perhaps it is an opportunity to continue to reflect now that we have prepared for the coming of Christ into the world now that we have heard of his coming and as we have read Mark his death and resurrection now what do we do with it now obviously that's something we're always supposed to be contemplating but in, in a maybe a more pointed way how are we meant what are we meant to do with this news I invite you to take some time to journal, to meditate, to pray, to consider how this good news that has been proclaimed to you, what are you going to do with it? 
And when you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. The Word was made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. And dwelt among us. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus, Son of the living God, splendor of the Father, light eternal, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, King of glory, Son of righteousness, born of the Virgin Mary, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Lord, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, Prince of peace, shepherd of souls, perfect in holiness, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, friend of all, protector of the poor, treasure of the faithful, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, good shepherd, inexhaustible wisdom, our way, truth, and life, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, joy to the angels and crown of all the saints, glory to you, O Lord. Christ is born, give him glory. Christ has come down from heaven, receive him. Christ is now on earth, exalt him. O earth, sing to the Lord, O you nations, praise him in joy, for he has been glorified. Amen. Now the God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click, click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. Our reading came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time.